Thank you. Welcome to Junket Jam Live, taped right here. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Lovely to see you too. I'll catch you after the show. <laughs> Welcome to Junket Jam Live, taped right here in New York City, where there are more Trump buildings than there are public schools, which may explain why that man is so goddamn mental. <laughs> now, public school is very important to me. It's actually where I first learned how to draw. Uh, my very first drawing was actually a heart, which when turned upside down becomes a nut sack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> our school was so underfunded that our fine art literature, you know, we got it off the bathroom walls. <laughs> but I always loved art. I must have been eight years old when my mother bought me my first art set, which was really weird because I never asked for that shit. <laughs> but what I really did want was a power wheel, not a color wheel. She didn't get that in my mouth. <laughs> but I did enjoy watercoloring as a kid. Uh, my favorite color was yellow, and my favorite canvas was my bed. <laughs> now, as a teenager, I attended the high school of art and design, where I studied film. And uh, you can see how far that got me. I host a public access show, guys. But high school was also where I met my very first boyfriend. Um, he's actually a she now, which means at some point in my life, unbeknownst to me, I was also somehow a lesbian. <laughs> but we are still friends, um, and we hang out all the time. But admittedly, walking around with her can be quite embarrassing. Um, which is probably why whenever I'm with her, she makes me wear a bag over my head. <laughs> but like most women, she's actually quite beautiful. Um, but if you ask me, I feel like most women wear entirely too much makeup. They just pile it on and end up covering the best part of their faces, which for me, of course, is their mustaches. <laughs> Thank you, Renita. <laughs> you know what else women love? Uh, I found women also love themselves some good painting parties. <laughs> now, if you've never been to a painting party, that's where adults pay $35 to do the very same thing a kindergartner does every day for free. Mm -hmm. And they let you bring your own booze. That way, you can get drunk enough and forget that you just spent $35 to do the same thing a kindergartner does every day for free. But it's always the same. Have you been to one? Have you been to any of these? Well, it's always the same three paintings. It's a, it's a silhouette of a tree. Uh, it's a flower on a tree. Or you could paint tree branches, <laughs> which is like, you know, come on already. Just save your money and buy a plant. My husband has actually reserved a corner in our house for all of our party paintings. It's uh, right in the garbage. <laughs> I find that most people don't even paint for fun, right? They just, the only time they pick up a paintbrush is because they desperately need their security deposit back, right? <laughs> but I first, I actually first learned how to paint from my grandmother. And her most amazing artwork was what she did on her walls. She was just so wonderful at painting over roaches. <laughs> her entire hallway looked like the lost city of Pompeii. Mm -hmm. And if you looked really closely at her walls, you could see the preserved remains of mother roaches <laughs> just clinging on to their babies asking themselves, why? Why is this woman painting us magenta? <laughs> now, Grandma was crafty, too. If she didn't have the paint color she needed to complete a project, she did not let that stop her from using nail polish instead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those projects usually just consisted of her initials. Those were those projects <laughs> on everything. But um, you know what else never stopped? Poor little grandma. 
lines and corners, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> the edges on her ceiling always look like she had a painting party with Ray Charles. <laughs> you need to come to every show. <laughs> Now, one of Grandma's most ambitious projects, of course, was painting the outside of her house in Puerto Rico. So while most grandmas spent their time at Michael's looking for a spool of yarn, my grandmother spent her time outdoors looking for a heat stroke. <laughs> and she found one all right. <laughs> Try painting now, Grandma. <laughs> of course, the joke there is that she can't, right? She's dead. But at least she died doing what she loved, you know, smoking. <laughs> but the greatest lesson I learned from Grandma was how to be colorblind, which if you ever saw any of her knitted scarves, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> but I personally, I don't see black people as black, right? I see them as brown. And I don't see white people as white. I see them as the devil. <laughs> I know that joke, that joke is so wrong on so many levels. <laughs> Why people actually make better liars than Satan. I know. Say what you will. My black friends love that joke. Okay. But think about it, right? A black man would never run a Ponzi scheme because he knows he doesn't need to lie to you in order to rob you, right? No, he's just gonna tell you straight up, yo, run your shit, motherfucker. And you know what else you're never gonna see a man of color do that a white man probably will? Yeah, burn his Nikes, he's never gonna do that. That's because he likely already burned through his savings just to buy a pair. Mm -hmm. Now they say, I guess it's an old adage or whatever it is. They say be careful when buying someone you love a pair of shoes, right? Because they may just walk out of your life with that same very pair of shoes on. And I've got to say, you know, I've bought loved ones shoes plenty of times. And believe it or not, even till this day, my mother refuses to leave. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Which is understandable because, you know, it's her house. <laughs> now, conversely, I have never bought shoes for any of my audience, but that has never stopped any of them from walking out in the middle of my act. <laughs> but I'm glad you guys have stayed, because we've got a great show for you. And we've got a great guest joining us. His name is Hector Miguel Lopez Jr., a name so long it makes sense to say it again. Hector Miguel Lopez Jr. Actually, for the rest of the show, let's just call him Hector Lopez. Hector Lopez is coming up. Stick around, guys. You are watching Junkie Jam Live. Thank you. Hang on. <laughs> 